Look at the little pit over there, nice. From the coast of West Bow to Black County. Silent to turn the heart to silent, I will free. Glide in through the depths. Glide in to your death. There you go, level 90 now, well, ETC are uh, back uh, here at BlizzCon, closing out the show, and we're minutes away from the Foo Fighters coming on live on the main stage. We'll be bringing that to you live right here on DirecTV. It's Jeff Keeley again here with Cat Hunter and Kim Fan. Uh, as we mentioned, Foo Fighters coming up, and that will be the end of, of BlizzCon. 2011, but uh, one cool thing that's happening is if you're watching the Foo Fighters here at BlizzCon or at home, there's a special shirt you guys can get to commemorate the occasion, right? Absolutely. We can't leave without a commemorative shirt. That would be ridiculous. Why don't you show it to us, Kat? Woo! Foo I got Fighters my shirt BlizzCon already. 2011 shirt, and you guys can go to store.foofighters.com if you want to get this commemorative shirt. Uh, Better known as a Fouvenir. The Fouvenir, wow, veneer. we're getting a little foofy here at the end. All right, well, uh, that's very cool. So Foo Fighters will be coming up in a few minutes here live at BlizzCon. But uh, earlier today, I got to meet up with Paul Sams. Uh, he just finished the closing ceremony. Chat with him about all things BlizzCon and uh, what we can expect from the future of Blizzard. So let's check that out right now. 
All right, I'm over here with Paul Sams, a familiar face uh, from Blizzard. Uh, Paul, BlizzCon is on 26,000 people this year, is that right? Yeah, 26. That's it's crazy. Right. And it's sold out in how many seconds this year? Uh, I don't know the number of exact seconds, but I, I think it's three or four. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing the, the fans and how much they love Blizzard and what you guys have done with BlizzCon. It really has become an institution uh, for the fans. And this is a year-long planning process to do BlizzCon. Yeah. And you really are maxed out, right? I mean, there's no more room here in Anaheim? No, there isn't. Um, you know, we uh, we chose this number. We could actually get more people in here, okay. but we wanted to maintain intimacy yeah. with 26,000 people. Well, you know, so um, well, you're, you're right. You want people to be able to play the games and yeah. experience these things. The lines would be too long if you had more people. Yeah, right? we're, no. we want it to be BlizzCon, not LineCon. So, right. you yeah. know, um, it's uh, it seems to be a pretty good number. Once in a while, you know, at like the peak of the day, yeah. it might get a little crowded here and there, but it kind of adds to the experience, I think, because you can yeah. see all these people that, you know, you connect with and you relate to that are into the same stuff, and I, I think it's pretty cool. So is it basically a going concern now that there will be a BlizzCon kind of every fall? Do you guys plan against that? I think that's our plan, yeah. certainly. Um, you know, when, when you have the kind of excitement and uh, support that we've been fortunate to have, uh, with BlizzCon and the number of people that, that jump on online and, and yeah. try to get those tickets. It tells us that there is a, a demand and an enthusiasm for it, and, you know, we we love it. I mean, as Chris yeah. oftentimes says in his uh, openings, he always talks about how it really kind of recharges us. He once said it recharges our geek batteries, and I think it, it really um, is true. We come out of here pretty amped up. The fans love what you guys put on. Now, you've got three big games, uh, or at least publicly you've announced three yes. big games that are in development right now at Blizzard. Which one are you spending the most time on? What, what are you really excited about personally? You know, um, I think a lot of folks that kind of have heard me talk before know that StarCraft's my favorite game. Yeah. The original StarCraft was my favorite game of all time. And so, you know, the idea of Heart of the Swarm uh, coming soon is, is pretty exciting to me, you know. But at the same time, D3 coming is also a, a big one. I, I probably, of our franchises, spent the most time on StarCraft first and foremost, yeah. then Diablo, and then Warcraft. All of them have got a lot of hours, but but StarCraft is definitely my yeah. best, my biggest love. Cool. Aside that, from the family, you know. Family, <laughs> the team, right, right. the whole right. thing. Um, now, let's talk about some of the new business initiatives that you have at Blizzard, because you oversee, you know, a lot of business around the world for Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are known for doing, you know, great packaged goods products, and certainly now stepping into the online space with yeah. Warcraft. And you're doing something brand new at Diablo 3, which is this auction house, which is yes. basically like an eBay kind of inside the game where you can use uh, yeah. gold or actually real-world currency That's right. to buy items. That's a, a huge leap for you guys, and I'm sure it took a long time to plan out, right? Uh, I can't describe how yeah. long it's taken to plan because, you know, uh, Blizzard is a global company and yeah. we try to make sure that the gameplay experiences that we deliver and, and the, the business models and all those things associated with the overall experience um, work everywhere. Yeah. And what you find in doing something like this is there's a lot of different laws and rules yeah. in each of the different countries that makes it to where it's, it's pretty tough to have an exact uh, replica of business model a, across the world. And so um, the RMT Auction House, which is the real money transfer auction house, um, is, is something that we felt was important uh, to serve big needs that we saw with Diablo 2. Uh, there was a lot of third-party sites yeah. that, were, that were servicing the players that wanted to, to have access to different equipment and other things within the game. And what they were doing was, was they'd go to these third-party sites, and they were getting scammed regularly, and yeah. there was all sorts of strange things that were going on. Where people were, were being taken advantage of, and, and it really, I think, negatively impacted the gameplay experience for those players. We, um, we thought this time, you know, this is, this is going to happen one way or the other, so why don't we create a safe, secure environment for players to be able to do that? We also thought to ourselves, well, wait a second. Um, if we do that, is that going to change the experience of the game? And so we decided that we would provide two mechanisms for people to, to have item trading involved. So there's a gold item trading solution that will be within, in, included within the game. Players will be able to, without real money, uh, trade items and, and other things through that system. For those people that have a desire to try to kind of uh, find new ways to get you know, crazy loot, they, they'll have this other solution. And one of the things that I think is even more groundbreaking than any of it is, is that you're going to be able to cash out. So in the event that you uh, sell certain of the items that you've gained through playing the game, 
if you, uh, at the time of putting those items up for auction, choose that you're going to cash out, then it'll go into a third-party site uh, that, that you will have set up that we have a relationship with that will allow cash out. Okay. And I think that's pretty exciting because, um, you know, a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into these games. They have a great time doing it, and, and uh, it'll give them a, a new mechanism to be able to, to, to pull those monies out. So you'll buy some other great BlizzCon swag and Blizzard That's what items. I'm hoping. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, Paul, it's great talking with you. Uh, good luck. Uh, everything you're doing at Blizzard. Thank you. And we got a lot of great games coming for Blizzard fans in 2012. We are very excited about them. Awesome. Big, big slate. I think this coming year is going to be our biggest and best year yet. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. All right. That was Paul Sams earlier today talking about what we can expect from Blizzard in the future. I'm still here with Kat and uh, Kim. So wait a sec. Let's get to this actually for a second. Okay. Yeah. What We're is not these alone. are mega blocks? Uh, these are super super cool, and this is a, a thrall right here. It is. So everyone in their goodie bag got this shaman thrall. Yes. And the, when I went by the mega blocks booth today, they made six of these, and they gave me one of them. It's the casted version of the same. One of six. Right. I'm very very proud Let's take of my a look little at this. baby. Right. So this is the uh, th this is a this is a special one, very right? Special. What yeah. is it? Tell us about this one. Well, this is the ca it's just a, a metal casted version. So this is the okay. one that everyone got in their bag, but we got a special souvenir one. A special one. Now there are going to be a lot more mega blocks coming out uh, based on Blizzard characters, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And we, the booth was full of people today, and we're going to be seeing toys coming out summer of next year for World of Warcraft. All right. So summer of 2012, the mega blocks yes. and World of Warcraft partnering up. Yes. Now there's also the goodie bag that. Um, we never brought by, but there's a lot of cool stuff in there too, right? We did. In the goodie bag this year, there was no a... No noob, right? No noob this year. This year Here's it was Tyrael, um, and Tyrael was based off of the, the pet that was done for Worldwide Invitational. So okay. it was a sculpture based on that done by uh, people here at Blizzard. And then and it was produced by Sideshow Collectibles, who was also here. And there Very is a there's yeah. a, a Cryptozoic sample deck for people to play the World of Warcraft trading card game. And what else? we had an auth a Diablo authenticator in there, and then we had this item plus a lot of great offers from our partners. Very cool. That's mm -hmm. one of the special benefits you get of uh, coming to BlizzCon yeah. is that goodie bag. And, of that course, there's the Blizzard store mm -hmm. where uh, fans were buying things. And then if folks are watching this at home and, uh, you know, weren't able to be here in person, you will be able to buy some of those items down the road uh, yeah. online, right? You can actually go online right now to blizzard.com slash store, and you can go ahead and get a key art t-shirt, or you can get a key art poster, or several of the items that have been on sale in the past. And then we're going to have a special post sale with everything that's in Hall A that's left over. We're putting it on trucks tomorrow, and then we're going to put it back up for you guys at home to buy. And we'll send you an email that information. There'll be something special in November, right? I think a special sale mm -hmm. for Absolutely. Yeah. Dates will be announced very soon. All right, well, we that's count everything. What people love their Blizzard, they can't get enough of it. Uh, so, Kim, you've had a pretty fun couple of days here. I Big have. tournaments, right? I feel like these tournaments get bigger and bigger every year. No Warcraft 3 this year, which is the first time we have some Warcraft, but I don't think anyone missed it because the no, StarCraft tournaments think, were so amazing. I think StarCraft definitely made up for No Warcraft 3, and uh, I loved it. It was by far the most epic tournament. I have ever experienced at BlizzCon. I think everyone else is going to agree as well. And those guys put on such a great match. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, my voice is gone today because I scream. I scream so much for MMA. And then I'm also happy because MVP won. And uh, yeah. I and we had two halls watching it here. We had, you know, the RTS stage was full all the way to the back, and then the main hall was no full. No one saw watching the main people. main hall, but it was filled as well. Yeah. So there was a uh, lot it, of spectators. It really shows, I think, that esports has arrived in a big way, and those matches were fun to watch. Great commentary and a lot of tension. I mean, that's a sign of a great game when you can have something that it's unclear who's going to win. I mean, there were moments in that final game between Nesty and uh, MVP where one was ahead and the other guy pulled ahead. I mean, it was just, it, great tension there. Uh, between the two players. So I think Kat called it correctly. Uh, MVP is Rocky. Yeah, he just did a great comeback, and it was really amazing. And um, I also found out that over in the hotel across the street, they were streaming it as well. Mm -hmm. So, Barcraft. We had a, we going had on at the hotel. Bar There's more Barcraft back, coming. More All right, Barcraft. well, it's, it's a dry bar here, but we're having a lot of fun uh, talking about BlizzCon. Now, let's recap some of the big things that have happened over the past two days at BlizzCon, and the Foo Fighters will be coming up uh, in a few minutes here. But, uh, you know, Three big games, three big franchises from Blizzard, mm -hmm. all talking about new things. Absolutely. So we had, uh, obviously, StarCraft II, The Heart of the Swarm. I uh, talked a little bit about some of those new multiplayer units, what was going to be added and deleted. Uh, also, a little bit of a tease of the campaign. And, you know, Kerrigan's story there is the hero 
um, in game. Hero or villain, we're not really sure, but I gotta tell you for sure, that was one of the most amazing cinematics I've ever seen put out Pretty for cool. StarCraft. I, I can't wait to see what the cinematics department is gonna do with that uh, full-blown game. Mm -hmm. So we'll hear